dragonflies are beautiful. They are the thing of myths and mysteries. Most countries and most people hold them in high regard. In some Native American cultures, they're seen as a healing spirit. In other cultures around the world, they're seen as a symbol of transformation, of hope, of adaptability in the face of very acute and traumatic change. When a dragonfly is found in your house, it's considered good luck. When it lands on you, it's a sign that you need to hang on to your pants because your life is going to change. However, they also are a sign and a symbol to let you know that as long as you persevere through these changes, that things are going to work out for themselves in the end. So today's tutorial is on how to make a dragonfly. This particular dragonfly is the dragonfly that I will be showing you how to make. The pattern is the same for all three, so pick whichever yarn and size hook you prefer to use and follow along. This particular dragonfly happens to be made with, with a two-ply sports recycled silk yarn. So it's a little, it's a little chunkier. You can kind of see that it has more of an industrial or even country feel to it. And that would be great hanging off of any porch, along with some wind chimes. Just beautiful. This dragonfly right here is a lot more colorful. It's made with a sparkly silk yarn or I should say, super fine lace weight yarn, and trimmed out with a little bit of black crochet thread just to help make those colors pop a little more. And then the next dragonfly I have as an example for you today is made with your standard everyday size 10 crochet thread. And this one has more of a touch of elegance to it. Welcome to Weaving Weird Studio and my creative weird life. My name is Sig and what a pleasure it is to have you with me at this time today. It's your interest and support that allows me to contribute new content and weekly videos. Help us all grow together by tapping the subscribe bar, notification bell, and the like buttons. I look forward to your comments and always value your feedback. Now let's get started. So while I used a lot of different yarns and threads and all that information will be listed in the description box below if you're at all interested, I am going to use this lightweight size three shiny blue yarn. I'm also going to use this two ply size two weight yarn. I will be doing this particular Dragonfly with a size C hook, also a, known as a 2.75 millimeter hook. I will be using a tapestry needle. I will also need to use some 20 gauge jewelry craft wire. I will need a pair of jewelry craft wire plier and also a pair of scissors. I'm going to begin with my aqua colored shimmery yarn because dragonflies are shimmery and I'm going to make the face of the dragonfly. Now this dragonfly has lots of components. Well, not that many, a few components. And, um, and then we will piece them all together once we have them made. So I'm going to begin by chaining three. One, two, and three. And I'm going to join. I'm gonna chain one. And then I'm going to continue to single crochet six single crochets in this chain three circle.
once I've crocheted six, I'm going to join. I'm going to chain one. And so in round two, I'm going to single crochet twice in each of the stitches. And that'll give me a total of 12 single crochets for round two. Then I'm going to join. I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to do a single crochet in each of the stitches, leaving me with a total of 12 single crochets for round three. Then I'm going to join. And at this point, I'm going to fasten this off, but I'm going to leave myself a decent length of tail, about eight inches maybe. And this will be what I use to sew the face onto the head of my dragonfly. So now the next thing I'm going to make are the eyes. And I'll need two of these. And I'll begin by making an adjustable ring. And then I'm going to single crochet. Six single crochets in this ring. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now for my dragonfly, I am using the same color that I would otherwise use on the body of my dragonfly. You might choose to do a different color combination, but I happen to like the eyes remaining pretty much the same color as the body of my dragonfly. So now that I have six single crochets on my circle and I've pulled my circle tight, I'm going to work in a spiral. And so what I'm going to do is now my the next stitch, I am going to work two single crochets into that next stitch. And then the stitch after that for this round two, two single crochets. So I'm going to end up with a total of 12 single crochets for this round two. And I'm going to still continue to work in the spiral. And for rounds three and four, I'm going to single crochet one single crochet in each of the stitches. So for round three, it's, you're going to end up, we're going to end with 12 stitches. And for round four, you're also going to end with 12 stitches. And then we're going to want one more round, which will give us a grand total of five rounds for the eyes. So again, we'll want to do one single crochet for each stitch, leaving us with a total of 12 stitches or 12 single crochets for round five. And then we're going to finish off. Again, go ahead and leave maybe an eight inch tail as before you're going to use this extra tail for sewing your eye onto the head of your dragonfly. And you're going to want to repeat exactly what you did here to create a second eye. The next thing I want to crochet is the body. And I'm going to do that by creating an adjustable ring. And then I'm going to single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, and six.
I'm going to pull my tail tight to close that middle hole up as much as possible. And then I'm going to join and chain one. And now for round two, I'm going to do two single crochets in each of these stitches, giving me a total of 12 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then I'm going to join. And I'm going to chain one. Now for round three, I'm going to single crochet in the same stitch. And then I'm going to make two single crochets in the stitch after that. So give me a total of three stitches so far. The next stitch is going to be a single crochet. And the stitch after that is going to be two single crochets. And then the stitch after that is going to be a single crochet. And the stitch after that is going to be two single crochets. And I will continue on with this pattern and for round three, I should end up with 18 stitches. Now for round four, I'm going to single crochet, a single crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet in the stitch after that. And then in that third stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. And again, a single crochet in the next stitch, a single crochet in the stitch after that, and two single crochets in the stitch after that. I'm going to continue that pattern all the way around for round four, leaving me with a total of 24 stitches. I'm going to join, chain one. And that begins us for round five. And then in round five, I'm going to single crochet in the same stitch. I'm going to single crochet in the stitch after that. And I'm going to single crochet in the stitch after that. And the next stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. So I'm going to single crochet in the stitch after that once. And once in the stitch after that. And once in the stitch after that. And then the next stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. So I think you can see the, how that pattern is going to go again. One single crochet. The next, another single crochet. And then the next, another single crochets. And then two single crochets in the stitch after that. And you're going to continue this and you should end up with 30 stitches for round five. And we're going to join for round six. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet in that same space, that same stitch. I'm going to single crochet two, single crochet three, and then single crochet four. And then the next stitch, I'm going to make two single crochets. And one single crochet, and the next one single crochet, next one single crochet, and the next one single crochet. And then in the stitch after that, two single crochets. So one single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet, four single crochet, and then two single crochets in the same stitch after that. So you're going to continue on with this pattern for the remainder of round six, giving you a total of 36 stitches on this round. Go ahead and join. And then for round seven, we're going to chain one. 
and single crochet in the same stitch. And we're going to single crochet in each of the next four stitches. And then do two single crochets in the stitch after that. Then we're going to do a single crochet in each of the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And then two single crochets in the stitch after that. Single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And then two single crochets in the stitch after that. And then continue doing that same pattern, five single crochets, and then two single crochets in the stitch after that for round seven. And you should end up with 42 stitches on this round. Next, we're going to join. And then make a chain and begin round eight. For round eight, I'm going to go ahead and single crochet in the same stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet in each of the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then in the stitch after that, I'm going to single crochet two single crochets. After that, I'm going to single crochet in each of the next six stitches, two, three, four, five, and six. And then in the stitch after that, I'm going to do two single crochets in the same stitch. Again, six single crochets in the next six stitches. five, six, and then two single crochets in the stitch after that. A single crochet in each of the next six stitches. And then two single crochets in the stitch after that. So at the end of round eight, you should have a total of 48 stitches. Then we're going to join as before for round nine, chain one and single crochet in the same stitch. And this is going to be our last round. And I'm going to single crochet in the next six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to do two single crochets in the stitch after that. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next seven stitches, a single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then next stitch, I'm going to single crochet, two single crochets. I'm gonna continue on just like that. So I'm going to single crochet in each of the next seven stitches, so two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to do two single crochets in the stitch after that. And then I'm going to single crochet a single crochet in each of the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
and seven, and then two single crochets in the stitch after that. And when you've completed round nine, you should have finished with a total of 54 stitches. Now we're going to go ahead and finish off. And as before, leaving our tail with a few inches on it so that we can use that for sewing. And we're going to set that body part aside. So next we're going to start on the wings. And we're going to need a total of four panels, two right side panels, and two left side panels. So I'll begin by showing you how to do the right side panels. I'm going to begin by crocheting a chain of 35 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. 34 and 35. I'm going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. And then I'm going to slip stitch three more times. And that gives me a total of four slip stitches. Then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. I'm going to skip two of the chains and I'm going to double crochet in that next chain. I'm going to chain two and I'm going to skip two and I'm going to double crochet in the next chain. And I'm going to chain two I'm going to skip two and I'm going to double crochet in the next chain. And I'm going to continue just like this until the end of my chains. So that should give me a total of nine of these chain two spaces. Okay, so now that we've completed the first row and we have nine chain two spaces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and one chain three space. We're going to go ahead and we're going to chain five. We're going to turn our work. And then going to double crochet in the next double crochet. And I'm going to chain two. And then double crochet in the next double crochet. I'm going to do this seven more times, chain two, and double crochet into the next double crochet. Okay, now that we're here, back towards this chain three space, I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to single crochet into that chain three space. And then I'm going to slip stitch in the next four stitches. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work. Next, I'm going to single crochet five times. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to chain three, and then I'm going to double crochet in the next double crochet. And then I'm going to continue as I did before. I'm going to chain two, and then double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain two, double crochet into the next double crochet. I'm going to continue that all the way. Now that we're 
now that I've gotten all the way back to the last or the end of the wing on this right side panel, I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to single crochet into that chain five space. Now I'm going to start working in the round. So what I'm going to do next is while we're still in that chain five space, I'm going to half double crochet two times, one and two. And then I'm going to half double crochet into this bar right here at the end. And then I'm going to make five half double crochets into the next chain five space. One, two, three, four, and five. Next, I'm going to single crochet into the next double crochet stitch. And then I'm going to do two single crochets into the two chain space. And then I'm going to single crochet into the next double crochet space. And then I'm going to single crochet into the next two chain space. I'm going to continue this all the way down to the end of my wing. And then here when we get to the base of the wing, I'm going to single crochet in each one of those next stitches. I'm going to continue doing that all the way around. until we get to the next chain three space. Then we're going to single crochet in that space two times. And then single crochet in the next double crochet. And continue just as we had before, two single crochets in the chain two space and then a single crochet in the double crochet space. And continue just like that until we've made a complete round. And then we'll finish off this color for the wing. Now for the tail on the wing, we're just going to want to weave that into the back. So now your wing should look like this. And what I'm going to show you next, you're going to do this on all four wings. So I'm just going to show you how to do this next part on just the one wing. But remember, you'll want to do this on all four wings. I'm going to, I'm going to take my, my jewelry wire. And I figure out about how much I want. Things are going to be a little different depending on the yarn or the thread you use to make this project with. And then I'm going to cut enough wire to completely make the complete diameter of this wing and then with some extra room on the ends. Because what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take these, these jewelry pliers with the rounded nose. I'm using rounded nose in this case. And I'm just going to do a little, just a little curly cue on the end there. And what this is going to do is this is going to prevent my yarn from slipping off while I'm doing the next step. So for the next step, 
I'm going to need this shimmery. This is a bamboo blend yarn. You can use whatever yarn you'd like to that is an appropriate size and consistent with the yarn that you're using for the rest of your, for your piece. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the corner of my wing here at the base and I'm going to insert my hook and I'm going to loop over and pull through some of that yarn and I'm going to, to begin. So now what I want to do is I want to do a single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around my wing, working that single crochet around the wire. I'm going to do this all the way around and then I'm going to finish off that right here, back here at the corner of the other side of the base. And again, when you've completed your round of single crochets, you're going to leave yourself a bit of a tail because this is what you're also going to use for sewing. So this is your first panel, your first wing completed. And then with the wire, you'll be able to shape it as you please. And for your second right side panel, you're going to follow these directions exactly as they were given. And next, I'm going to go on to show you how to do the left side panels, of which you'll want two of those as well for your dragonfly. So when making the left side panel, you're going to do exactly what you did in terms of stitches for the right side panel all the way until the first round begins. And when we get to the first round, of the beginning for the left side panels of which two of these you're going to make. You're going to turn your work. And you're going to work basically backwards. So in this chain three space, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet three. And then I'm going to single crochet in the double crochet space, or actually the double crochet stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet two times in that chain two space. And then I'm going to single crochet once in the double crochet stitch, and then two times in this chain two space, just like we did before. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do exactly what we did before, but in reverse, all the way around. And then when we get here to this chain five stitch or space, that's when we're going to do our half double crochets. So then we'll do our five half double crochets and then again, the half double crochet in this bar, and then two half double crochets in this bit of chain three stitch. So let's go ahead and do that then. And then my last two half double crochets. And then I'm going to finish off I'm going to weave this end in and this will give us our left sided wing panel. Now it's time for us to begin with making the actual body of the dragonfly. 
Now, if I was going to just do my dragonfly in one main color, much like you saw in the example of the lavender looking dragonfly, I would begin by doing a chain of 110 chains. That's how I would begin with the body. However, because this dragonfly that I'm working on in the example today, I am going to make two colors. There's a small part of the back end of the body that I want to actually be this light aqua blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain 20 for the light aqua blue. And then I'm going to do what I'm going to do with that. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. And then I'll pick up again and chain 90 of my, of my multicolored yarn. Okay, so let's get started with that. I'm going to begin crocheting my 20 chains. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a tail. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay. And basically, what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put three single crochets in each chain. And I'll, of course, begin in the second chain from the hook. So I'll put three single crochets into 19 chains total. So if you're doing a different color for the very back end of your of your dragonfly, this is basically what you should have. And then with your tails a little long, because we're going to use that for sewing. And we're going to set this aside for now. Now with the rest of the body, I'm going to use my colored yarn. Now if you're using one yarn for the entire body, you're going to want to make sure that you chain 110. But if you're using two colors, then for the second color, we're going to chain 90. Again, leave your tail. One, two, three, four. Okay, so for those of you using just a single color for your dragon body, you're going to have wanted to have 110 chains. For those of you who have already done the first color of a two colored body, you are going to need 90 chains. And so those of you who have done one color, you're going to want to mark off at the count of 60 on your chain. And though for those of you who are using the two different colors, since you've already used the first color on the second color, you're gonna want to count off and mark off at the 40 count spot. So if you're using one color and you have 110 chains, then mark your spot at the 60 count. Otherwise, if you're using two colors and you're have a hundred or sorry and you have 90 chains that you're working with from this point mark off at the 40 count and this just makes it easier I mean you don't have to do it but you'll be happy that you did and if you don't have like a regular stitch marker just tie a little bit of yarn or something in that spot it'll help keep your count so much easier and you know why exactly right now so for those of you who have done your 110 count, you're going to go ahead and you're going to 
do three single crochets in each stitch. And you're going to do this 60 times. For those of you who have already done 20 of those stitches in your first color, you're going to now do that 40 times in your second color. Okay, so when you've worked your way up to your marker, go ahead and remove your marker. And the instructions from here on in are, are applicable to, to the rest of your, your dragonfly, regardless of whether you're using one color or two colors. So then you're going to want to count 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And then in that 19th stitch, go ahead and place your stitch marker again. Of course, you don't have to do this, but it allows you to keep track of these stitches a little easier or a lot easier, I would say. So now for the next 18 stitches, I am going to place three half double crochets into each chain. Now when you get to your stitch marker again, go ahead and count up four. And then put your stitch marker right into the next stitch after that. Because the next thing you're going to do is you're going to do three double crochets in each of the next four chains. I'm going to remove the stitch marker again. And then I'm going to count up five. It's one, two, three, four, and five. So in the stitch after the fifth count, I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker in again. And for the next five chains, I'm going to put three treble crochets in each one. Next, I'm going to count up nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then in that next stitch, I'm going to go ahead and throw my stitch marker in there again. And then in each of the next chain stitches, each of the next nine chain stitches, I'm going to put four treble crochets in each. Now in the next stitch, I'm going to do four double crochets into that next chain. And then in the chain after that, I'm going to do a half double crochet four of them actually. Then in the next three chains, I'm going to put four single crochets in each one of those. One, two, three, and four and then two more chains 
same thing. I'm going to count out seven chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And in each one of those chains, I'm going to place four double trebles. And when you've completed that, you're going to want to cut yourself a nice long tail. And it's probably a good, oh, I don't know, depending on the yarn you're using, how big it's going to be. A good 12 inches. And then I'm going to have to get this one all twisted properly. Okay, so this is what you've got so far. You can see right up here where you get a little bit of the neck, and that's going to be important, and then the rest of your body. And then for those of you who just used the one color, you're good to go. For those of you who used two colors, we are going to want to go ahead and fit that into the base of the tail like so. And I'll do that with the yarn. And basically, we just want to bring it right up the center. Maybe pick up a little bit of yarn or a little bit of the, of the fabric while we're at it. And we're just going to anchor that in there. And we don't want to pull it too tight, but we want to pull it snug enough, picking up a little bit of the fabric as I go along and pulling those coils together. And then just go ahead and whatever ends you have, just tied them right down the right down in the center of your piece. Take my head and I'll, and I'll pull that together and then I'll make sure that the neck is a little exposed because we really want that neck to be there. And I'll continue to do that with the rest of the length of the body. And then as I go along, I'll also shape my body in the conical shape that I'm looking to have my dragonfly body in. So, so far you should have something that looks like this. And I'm going to do one more step with the body. Now, this next step is completely optional. You can do it or you cannot do it. If you don't do it, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to stay in place just as it is. However, I am going to do it because I like to have a little bit more of an aperture within my dragonfly. Gives it a little more stability. If I want to bend it a little bit or shape it a little more, this gives me that flexibility to, to be a little more precise. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... A little more wire and I'm going to cut it oh just just a little shorter than the length of my dragonfly 
and then I'm going to run it just right down the center of the body. And once we get finished sewing the wings and everything else on, this will just stay in place all by itself. So you might have to fiddle it, you know, because it's going to run into fabric and, and yarn. So just kind of, just kind of needle it a little bit, you know, fiddle it down the center a bit. You're going to run into some resistance. Don't force it. Just pull back a little bit and find an open hole that you can continue to push it through. That's all. And then once I've gotten it through down the center like I want it, I'm just going to take that end and bend it over just a hair. And I'm going to hook it into the fabric so that it doesn't come out. And now I have a body that I can that I can shape and be confident that it's going to stay in the position that I move it. But there again, it's not it's 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 not required. It's completely optional particularly if you have small children or you're using this as like a mobile over a, you know, in a room that has kids. Um, if it should fall down or come loose, you, you know, you really don't want them having access to a wire that can be, that can be pulled out and, and create a potential injury hazard. Older kids are fine. Younger kids, you might want to reevaluate how, how much wire you actually put into this, if any at all. By now, you should have your components together. You should have two eyes, one face, one outer body, one middle body, four wings, right side panels, two of them, and left side panels, two of them. Now we're going to get ready to start assembling all of this together. So the first thing that we want to do is get our tapestry needle. And I'm going to put the face on to the regular body first. And this is what you should be left with, something that looks like this. Next, I'm going to sew on the eyes. And the eyes, I'm going to fit right here along either side of the head. Just like so. And I'm going to fit them over the head pretty good. So the eyes are going to be really close to each other, even on the top of the head. And this will give our dragonfly that nice dragonfly shaped head. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, again, whip stitch these on. And then show you what I do next. Your dragonfly has its eyes, it has its face. And next we're going to put the outer body on. Now for this, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fold this top part under by about a third so you look like something similar to this and then you're going to find the back of your dragonfly and you're going to wrap this around like a shawl similarly and then you're going to use this this tail of the thread that you have and you're going to sew this shut so basically what this is going to do is this is going to give you the main thorax of your of your body so now we have the outer body piece sewn on and remember as you're sewing also take this time and use it to your advantage in the sense of starting to shape your dragonfly into something that's that you like and that's more reminiscent of what you think your dragonfly should look like Now the next thing we need to do is add the wings. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. You have your tail here, and we're going to use this to sew, so we can certainly sew our wings on, um, which, which we will actually be doing. And we can optionally use a little bit of glue. So I, I do both, but not everyone wants to do that. And so what I do first, is I go ahead and I I cut off the excess wire. So 
I'm going to leave myself maybe half an inch, at least on this with this bigger, chunkier yarn. I will probably use, oh, maybe only a quarter of an inch when dealing with or using the, the crochet thread. And so then I'm going to kind of look at my, look at the back of my, my dragonfly and I'm going to kind of determine where I think these wires can be used to attach my wings. Okay, so I think probably right there is good. And so in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember where I wanted to put my wings, or I suppose too, um, if you're worried that you're not going to be able to do that very easily, you can always take a pin and pin where you think your wings are going to look best. Just right about there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take some of this glue, which again is optional. And just put some on the ends of those, of those wire pieces. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert the wire ends into, into the fabric. Now again, you're going to have to kind of fiddle it in there a little bit. Depending on what yarn you're using, it may slide in real easy or you may need to actually play with it a little bit to find a nice, a nice spot for it to kind of slide in through the, through the breaks in the fabric. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for a minute and I'm going to pull my yarn or my tail out of the way a bit. And then my other top one, I'm going to kind of say, okay, that's, that's pretty good. I think I'm going to go there. I'm going to go ahead and add my next wing. Okay, so I'm going to go in right about there. Sometimes you might have to just kind of pull your fabric back a little bit so that you can work with your wires a little easier, um, or at least I need to sometimes. So that is my second wing. I'm going to just sit that right there. I'm going to let the glue set up for a second while I insert my last two wings. And then we'll give it a, a few minutes to at least initially dry, or at least that glue to dry just a touch. And then I'll show you how to sew. So when I meet you back here in just another minute, I will have attached the other two wings exactly the same way. I'll figure out where I want to place them. And then I'll put them in exactly the same way. And when I come back, we'll show you how to, um, how I sew on the wings, how I add that extra strength and stability to, to the wings of this piece. You can see I've got them placed where I'd like to have them placed. There's a dab of glue. The ends of the wires are stuck into the back of the, of the dragonfly. And now I'm going to take the yarn, the tail that I had, and I'm going to just run that into right near where the, where the wire went in. And I'm going to run it across to the other side of the wing directly across from it. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a tug. And then I'm going to take that yarn and then I'm going to work it back into its corresponding color there on this second round of the wing that we did. And I'm going to run it here and bring it across to the bottom part of the first wing that we started with.
it can be a little fiddly, but just take your time. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put my needle in right there at that bottom. And then I'm going to run my needle through to the other side of the dragonfly to its corresponding wing. Now, if you need to use your your jewelry pliers to help you with your needle, by all means, whatever tools you've got at your disposal, that's what they're there for. And we're going to run that right down the center and weave it in. Weave in that loose tail, what's left of it, so we can make that good and tight. And we're going to do that with each tail of each wing, just like that. And when I finish the next three wings, we're sewing in the next three tails from the last three wings, just in the same way as I did that first one. So again, I'll take this tail and I'll wring it bring it through through the body of the dragonfly and I'll connect it to this side of the wing and then I'll bring it back through the body and connect to the next side of the wing on the other side and then bring it back through again and connect it to this wing and then I'll weave it through to hold tight and I'll do that same thing with the last two wings and when it's finished you will have a wonderful dragonfly. Now just a quick note. So like with this dragonfly right here, I actually have legs on it. Now if you wanted to put legs on this dragonfly, all you need to do is cut your wire, the same jewelry wire that you've used already before, into the length of the leg that you want. And then you take your accent yarn or just like a black yarn. In this case, I just used the black crochet yarn or sorry, the black crochet thread. And I just wrapped it around the wire, leaving, oh, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch of exposed wire so that I could then fit it into, poke it into the bottom of the dragonfly where I wanted it to sit. And then um, I also put a little glue on there and let that set up and so, so I can have legs. But because this particular dragonfly, I'm gonna actually hang with some wires, or at least that's my intention right now, and use as kind of a rustic decoration because the yarn, the yarn that I've used on this has a very rustic feel. So this is gonna give me a very rustic kind of country feel of a dragonfly. Whereas this of course is a, is a sparkly lace weight yarn that gives us a more refined, colorful look to the dragonfly. As opposed to the crochet thread that I used on this other example of the dragonfly. And so, until I see all you wonderful and creative fiber artists again, stay crafty, stay amazing, and above all, keep weaving your weird. Bye-bye.